What's going on guys and welcome to the second installment of simulating 10 seasons of F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. This time we're adding Braun GP into this one. So instead of last time how we just looked at all 10 of the real F1 teams currently, we're going to be adding in Braun GP as kind of the My Team. Um, but we're actually this time going to be looking at how they do and all that. My character is Rubens Barrichello. Of course he ran alongside uh, Jensen Button at Braun GP when it was a real team back in 2009 um, and we will be trying to get Jensen Button in the car at some point this season when we can hire him but we're going to be starting this season off with Callum Eilot um, as the second driver at Braun GP so um, yeah a couple of things to note is that yes one we are having the Braun GP team in here so that should be a little bit different there having 22 drivers on the team and 11, uh, t uh, 22 drivers on the grid and 11 teams. And um, I'm also going to have a few other little things that you guys have suggested. I'm going to be showing the wins and podiums of each driver every season, not just right at the end when we like look at the top 10 drivers. We'll actually be looking every season at how many wins and podiums each driver got. Um, and yeah, it should make things a little bit more interesting. I've also um, noted down when there was a regulation change this time as well. So that should make things a little bit, I don't know, more interesting, a bit more information for you guys. So let's get straight into it. So in Season 1, Valtteri Bottas becomes a first-time Drivers' Champion, World Champion of Formula 1, winning the World Championship in Season 1, 284 points, Max Verstappen in second with 265, and Lewis Hamilton in third, only a point behind Verstappen with 264 points, so really, really close with the whole top three there. And then it gets a, a bit of a gap with Sergio Perez in fourth with 193 points, then you've got Norris in fifth, Leclerc in sixth, Sainz in seventh, Daniel Ricciardo 8th, Pierre Gasly 9th, Sebastian Vettel 10th, Fernando Alonso 11th, Yuki Tsunoda in 12th, Lance Stroll is in 13th with the last of the point scoring positions with 3 points to his name. Then you've got Esteban Ocon, Antonio Giovinazzi, George Russell, Kimi Raikkonen, Mick Schumacher, Callum Eilat, Nicholas Latifi, Rubens Barrichello and Nikita Mazepin at the back. Alright, so here is our wins and podiums list. As you can see here at the top, Valtteri Bottas got 6 wins, 12 podiums. Verstappen with 5 wins, 12 podiums. Hamilton with 4 wins, 9 podiums. Perez with 1 win and 6 podiums. Then you had Norris with 3 podiums. Leclerc with 4 podiums. And Daniel Ricciardo with 2 podiums. The Constructors' Championship in Season 1 would go to Mercedes with 548 points, 10 wins and 21 podiums. Red Bull in 2nd with 6 wins, 18 podiums. And then it would be McLaren in 3rd, Ferrari 4th, Alpha Tauri 5th, Aston Martin 6th, Alpine 7th, Alfa Romeo up in 8th, Williams 9th, Haas in 10th, and it would be Braun GP who would come in last place in this first season. So the driver transfers going into Season 2, Kimi Raikkonen would retire from Formula 1 um, from Alfa Romeo, so that left a spot at Alfa Romeo, which George Russell would fill going from Williams to Alfa Romeo, and Dan Ticton would come into F1 with Williams. In Season 2, Valtteri Bottas would become a double world championship and a back-to-back -back world champion um, as he won the second year in a row here. So great stuff from Valtteri Bottas. Lewis Hamilton would come up in second place here, but I mean, it's not a massive gap between the two, the two drivers, only 14 points, but you know, a decent enough win and lead for Bottas there, taking his second championship in a row. Charles Leclerc would come home in third place, with Daniel Ricciardo right on his heels in fourth. Max Verstappen all the way down in fifth this time, so a bit of a drop off from him and from Red Bull this time out, over 100 points back from Hamilton and Bottas. And then you've got Carlos Sainz, Sergio Perez, actually quite a bit closer to his teammate here, so maybe, you know, I think Red Bull lost a bit of pace but also Verstappen just didn't do as well himself this season then you've got Norris getting beaten by Ricardo this time out Gasly Vettel Alonso Yuki Tsunoda Lance Stroll once again only scoring three points being the last of the point scorers then Esteban Ocon George Russell Antonio Giovinazzi Dan Ticton Nicholas Latifi Callum Eilat Mick Schumacher Rubens Barrichello and Nikita Mazepin the wins would be a little bit more spread out this time. You'd have 7 wins for Bottas and 11 podiums. Hamilton would have 5 wins and 11 podiums. Leclerc would pick up a win, 6 podiums. Same for Ricardo, 1 win, 6 podiums. Verstappen, only 1 win, only 5 podiums. Charles Leclerc wouldn't get a win, but he would have 3 podiums this season. Sergio Perez would pick up a win this year and 5 podiums. And Lando Norris would pick up only 1 podium this year. 
As for the constructors in season two, Mercedes would quite easily, quite dominantly take this one here, second in a row for this career mode with 572 points, 12 wins and 22 podiums. Fairly dominant season from Mercedes. Ferrari would jump up into P2 with one win, nine podiums. McLaren in P3, one win, seven podiums. Red Bull would fall from second to fourth in the constructors championship, but they were right behind McLaren and Ferrari with two points, 10 podiums, uh, two wins, 10 podiums. And then you'd have Alpha Tauri, Aston Martin, Alpine, Alfa Romeo, Williams, Braun GP would jump up to 10th with Haas in last. Going into Season 3, there would be a regulation change. I think I forgot to mention this at the end of Season 1, um, but you would have seen it up on the screen anyway. So going into Season 3, there would be a regulation change of aerodynamics and durability. Carlos Sainz would go from Ferrari to becoming a free agent, so Sainz gets dropped by Ferrari. Not doing quite as well as his teammate, but I think he was still doing decent. A little bit harsh for him to get dropped this early on. Callum Eilat would go from Braun GP to Ferrari. So, um, yeah, Callum Eilat finally... Finally getting that Ferrari drive that, I mean, he's not even in F1 in real life, but he is, of course, linked with the F1, uh, the Ferrari Driver Academy. And Jensen Button would go from being a free agent. He would come out of retirement to go back to Braun GP to see if he can get himself another world championship. And onto the Season 3 Championship, Lewis Hamilton would win his first championship of this career mode, but this makes him the record-breaking eight-time world champion now, 264 60 points, but only four points ahead of Max Verstappen, who uh, Red Bull took a big leap back up again this time out. Both Verstappen and Perez doing a great job here in second and fourth, respectively. And then Valtteri Bottas in third place, also pretty close behind, but um, yeah, not having as good of a season this time, getting beaten by his teammate for the first time in this career mode, and also beaten by Verstappen. Perez would come in fourth. Then you've got Lando Norris, Charles Leclerc, Daniel Ricciardo, Pierre Gasly, and Yuki Tsunoda. Pretty good season for. Alpha Tauri, Callum Eilat, Fernando Alonso, Esteban Ocon, Jensen Button would pick up one point in his first season back in F1, followed by Sebastian Vettel, Lance Stroll, George Russell, Nicholas Latifi, Antonio Giovinazzi, Dan Tictum, Rubens Barrichello, Mick Schumacher, and Nikita Mazepin. Lewis Hamilton would pick up six wins and nine podiums this season. Verstappen, four wins, 11 podiums. Bottas with four wins and eight podiums. Perez, no wins, but seven podiums. Lando Norris would pick up two wins and five podiums. Leclerc with six podiums. And then Daniel Ricciardo and Pierre Gasly, both with a podium each. And the constructors would be pretty similar again. However, a little bit closer this time. Mercedes would take the championship once again, three in a row here, um, with 509 points, 10 wins, and 17 podiums. Red Bull in second, only 457 points, so just under, just over 50 points behind, 52 points behind, I think, with four wins, 18 podiums. McLaren third with two wins, six podiums. Ferrari fourth with zero wins, six podiums. Alpha Tauri with just the one podium, and then Alpine, Braun GP jump all the way up to, what is that, eighth place, I think that is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh place, with Aston Martin eighth, Alfa Romeo ninth, Williams in tenth, and Haas in eleventh. Going into Season 4, there would be quite a lot of driver movements. No regulation change. However, Valtteri Bottas would retire from Formula 1. He won the first two championships in this career mode, but then after losing it the third time, uh, well, the third time round, um, he decided to retire from the sport. Two championships was enough for Bottas. Sebastian Vettel would make a legendary move, going from Aston Martin and replacing Bottas at Mercedes. So it's going to be Vettel and Hamilton at Mercedes. That is a very spicy lineup. Carlos Sainz would go back, uh, would return back to Formula One, joining Aston Martin, with Callum Eilat going from F Ferrari to becoming a free agent. So Eilat not impressed at Ferrari, and it has been dropped from the sport. Sergio Perez would go from Red Bull to Ferrari. Uh, Dan Tictum would go from Williams to Red Bull, so a big promotion there for Dan Tictum. And Guan Yu Zhou would go entering Formula One with Williams. And in Season 4, it would be a very close championship, but Sebastian Vettel would become a five-time Formula 1 world champion. He won four times in a row with Red Bull. He's now won with Mercedes. It is 
it's an awesome thing to see his first season at Mercedes and he wins the title. 235 points, only 4 points though, ahead of Pierre Gasly in the Alpha Tauri who has a stonking season. It's an amazing season from the Frenchman at Alpha Tauri. Great season for him. Lewis Hamilton a little further back in 3rd with 219 points. Then you've got Verstappen in 4th, Lando Norris 5th, Leclerc, Perez, Ricardo, Sonoda, Jensen Button rounds off the top 10. Then you've got Fernando Alonso, Dan Tictum at his first season, and Red Bull scoring 14 points. Esteban Ocon, the last point scorer. Then Carlos Sainz, Lance Stroll, Rubens Barrichello taking a bit of a jump up there. Nicholas Latifi, Guan Yu Zhou, Antonio Giovinazzi, Mick Schumacher, George Russell not having a good season this time in Alfa Romeo, being beaten by his teammates, and Nikita Mazepin at the back. Vettel would take four wins and nine podiums. Pierre Gasly takes up a win and ten podiums. Very good season from him, like I said. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, three wins, nine podiums. Verstappen would actually have the most wins of the season with five wins, but six podiums and just wasn't that great um, when he wasn't winning or on the podium. Um, I think the car came better towards the end of the season, wasn't that good further, you know, at the start of the season. Red Bull really were nowhere and came better towards the end, so that's really where he he rose up the order and got his wins. Lando Norris with another two wins, six podiums. Leclerc with a one win, four podiums. Perez gets two podiums, and Daniel Ricciardo gets two podiums as well. And Mercedes once again, quite easily this time again, take the drivers, uh, the constructors championship in season four with seven wins, seventeen podiums. Alpha Tauri with one win, ten podiums in second. McLaren third with two wins, eight podiums. Ferrari fourth with one win, six podiums. Red Bull down in fifth once again with five wins, six podiums. And then you've got Braun GP back up there in uh, one, two, three, four sixth place. I really should put numbers next to these so it's easier. And then you've got Alpine, Aston Martin, Williams, Alfa Romeo, and Haas. Going into season five, there would be the most driver moves and the most crazy stuff going on that I've ever seen in this game, I think, in a lot of regards. Antonio Giovinazzi would retire from Formula One from Alfa Romeo. Really interesting to see Giovinazzi retiring. Alfa Romeo were kind of nowhere at this point and were just not for some reason, not upgrading their car, like, at all. They were way down the bottom. They were starting to be way down the bottom and just weren't upgrading their car for some reason. Um, Esteban Ocon would replace him at Alfa Romeo, so probably a bit of a step down for Ocon. Christian Lungard would enter F1 with Alpine. Carlos Sainz would be dropped once again, this time by Aston Martin, and would find himself out of a Formula 1 seat. Guan Yu Zhou went from Williams to Aston Martin to replace him. Jack Aitken entered F1 to fill Zhou's space at Williams. Lando Norris would get dropped from McLaren. I do not know why, but for some reason McLaren drop Lando Norris and he's out of a Formula 1 seat. And Callum Eilot comes in to replace him at McLaren. So we've had two drivers, Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris, both dropped from the sport and are becoming free agent, and Antonio Giovinazzi retiring, so really interesting stuff. We'd also have a regulation change of chassis, powertrain, and durability. Now, midway through Season 5, there would be a bit of driver movement. Jack Aitken would go from Williams to Alpine, Christian Lungard from Alpine to Williams, so just a driver swap between those two drivers there. And the Season 5 Championship, well, Sebastian Vettel would now become a six-time world champion, winning back-to-back -back here with Mercedes 398 points to Lewis Hamilton in second with 266 points. It was absolute domination from Sebastian Vettel. It was his old Red Bull, like, was it 2012, 2011, when he just absolutely dominated the season? It's happened again here. I mean, you'll see how many races he won out of the 16 race season in a minute. But yeah, dominated with the points, that is for sure. Pierre Gasly once again up there in third place. Great season from him. Jensen Button up in fourth. So it looks like that Braun GP car has moved up the order. Yuki Tsunoda, very respectable fifth. Then you've got Charles Leclerc, Sergio Perez, Daniel Ricciardo, Max Verstappen, Callum Eilat, Lance Stroll, Dan Tictum, Fernando Alonso, Jack Aitken scoring his first point in Formula 1, Rubens Barrichello, Christian Lungard, Guan Yu Zhou, Mick Schumacher having a very good season there for the Haas, George Russell, Nicholas Latifi, Nikita Mazepin, and Esteban Ocon would be in last place with Alfa Romeo as their pace just absolutely dropped off a cliff towards the end of the season. 
And this is what I'm talking about with Vettel being absolutely dominant. Out of 16 races in the season, Vettel would win 14 of them and would be on the podium every single race, all 16 times. Hamilton would take one win to his teammates 14 and 13 times on the podium. Gasly with eight podiums, Button with five podiums. Yuki Tsunoda would be the only other driver to take up a win this season, so that was pretty crazy. His first win in the sport and two podiums. Then you've got Leclerc with two podiums, Perez with one podium, and Ricardo also with one podium. And in the constructors, well, it was about as dominant as it ever could be for Mercedes, taking their fifth championship in a row in this career mode. I don't even know how many in a row in real life a lot. 15 wins, 29 podiums, absolutely crazy. Alpha Tauri, one win, 10 podiums. Ferrari with three podiums. Braun GP up in fourth with five. McLaren with one podium. Then you've got Red Bull, Aston Martin, Alpine dropping down the order. Haas actually moving ahead of Williams and Alfa Romeo. So best season for Haas so far is P9. And going into season six, there would not be any regulation changes and not a whole lot of free um, of movement in the driver transfer market. But George Russell would be the next driver to be dropped from Formula One. Alfa Romeo would drop him. Or what I think is more likely is that that Alfa Romeo was so bad that he just decided he'd rather not be in F1 than be in that Alfa Romeo because, my God, they took... A, they were bad last season, they're going to be bad this next season. So George Russell is also now a free agent along with Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris. Christian Lungard goes from Williams to Alfa Romeo and Nobuharu Matsushita um, comes into F1 to go to Williams. In Season 6, we'd have a new Formula 1 world champion in the form of Charles Leclerc for Ferrari. It's awesome to see Ferrari get his first world championship and to have it happen with Ferrari in this career mode of mine. Of course, he won, I think, two championships in my last 10 seasons video, both with Mercedes. He's won one with Ferrari this time, which is awesome to see. Only just beats Verstappen, 251 to 246. Jensen Button in third place with 240. And then you've got Pierre Gasly, Sebastian Vettel, Yuki Tsunoda, Sergio Perez, Daniel Ricciardo, Lewis Hamilton, all the way down in P9. He's had a big drop off form here. Then Dan Tictum, Callum Eilot, Fernando Alonso, Lance Stroll, Jack Aitken, and Guan Yu Zhou. Then you've got Nicholas Latifi, Rubens Barrichello, Mick Schumacher, Nobuharu Matsushita, Nikita Mazepin, and then Esteban Ocon and Christian Lungard, both Alpines, P21 and 22. Not a good season at all for Alpha, Ta Alpha Romeo. I think I said Alpines. For both Alpha Romeos, yeah, they're really not having a good time. Leclerc would only take four wins this season and 11 podiums to Max Verstappen six wins but only eight podiums. Jensen Button would put, pick up his first wins of this career mode with three wins, nine podiums. Gasly picks up two wins and nine podiums. Vettel with only one win this season after the domination of last season, five podiums. Sonoda with two podiums, Perez with two podiums and Ricardo and Hamilton both with one podium. And we'd finally have another Constructors' Championship winner, and it wouldn't be Red Bull, it would be Ferrari. Ferrari would win the Constructors' Championship in Season 6. 361 points, 4 wins, 13 podiums. Red Bull come home in second with 6 wins, um, 8 podiums, not too far behind them. Very close there with Alpha Tauri, 2 wins, 11 podiums. Mercedes would drop from winning 5 times in a row to 4th place with 1 win, 6 podiums. Braun GP in 5th with 3 wins, 9 podiums. McLaren in 6th with 1 podium. Then we've got Alpine, Aston Martin, Williams, Haas, and Alfa Romeo. Going into Season 7, there would be a regulation change to aerodynamics, but there would be no driver transfers at all, so it's all the same going into Season 7. However, what wasn't the same was the world champion, and it would be Max Verstappen taking his first world championship, his first driver's championship in Formula 1 with 286 points, fairly decent margin to Charles Leclerc, the previous champion, in second with 229. Then you've got Jensen Button, Sebastian Vettel, Pierre Gasly, Daniel Ricciardo, Yuki Tsunoda, Dan Tictum, Sergio Perez, Lewis Hamilton down in 10th now, Fernando Alonso, Jack Aitken, Callum Eilat, Lance Stroll, Nobuharu Matsushita scores the first point for Williams, I'm pretty sure, in this career mode. Guan Yu Zhou, Nicolas Latifi, Christian Lungard, Mick Schumacher, Esteban Ocon, Rubens Barrichello, and Nikita Mazepin. 
in Season 7, Max Verstappen would take 8 wins and 11 podiums, Leclerc 4 wins, 9 podiums, Button 2 wins, 9 podiums, Vettel 1 win, 8 podiums, Gasly 1 win, 5 podiums, then we'd have Daniel Ricciardo and Yuki Tsunoda both on 2 podiums, and Dan Tictum getting his first podium along with Sergio Perez with a podium. And now, Red Bull would finally win their first Constructors' Championship of this career mode with 371 points, 8 wins and 12 podiums. Ferrari in second with 4 wins, 10 podiums. Then Alfa Tauri, 1 win, 7 podiums. Mercedes still in 4th place here, 1 win, 8 podiums. Braun GP, 2 wins, 9 podiums. McLaren with 2 podiums. And then Alpine, Aston Martin, Williams. Alfa Romeo would finally move at least up into 10th place, beating Haas. Going into Season 8, we would be back to a fairly active um, driver transfer market. No regulation changes this time. However, Sergio Perez would retire from Formula 1. Lance Stroll would take his spot at Ferrari. George Russell would return back to Formula 1, and he'd find the seat at Aston Martin. Esteban Ocon retired from Alfa Romeo, I think, just because of how bad the Alfa Romeo is. I mean took a step up in Season 7, but they were still way at the bottom and weren't having a great time. Um, I think, honestly, Ocon, just kind of like George Russell, would rather have been out of the sport than than, um, than in the Alfa Romeo, but he decided to just full-on retire. Then you've got Carlos Sainz taking his spots at Alfa Romeo, so he's back into the sport again. Pierre Gasly decides to retire from Formula 1. That one was a bit of a shock, seeing Gasly retire from Alfa Tauri, but it did mean that Lando Norris would also return back to the sport with Alfa Tauri. And in Season 8, it would be another back-to-back -back championship, this time for Max Verstappen, who would win not by quite as much this time, but would be once again just in front of Charles Leclerc and then Jensen Button. Then you've got Lando Norris, his first season back in the sport with Alpha Tauri, pretty decent result from him. Then Sebastian Vettel, Dan Tictum, Yuki Tsunoda, Lance Stroll, Daniel Ricciardo, George Russell up there in P10 for Aston Martin, very good result from him. Um, Lewis Hamilton, P11, he's literally, he's dropped a place every season so far. Then you've got Jack Aitken, Fernando Alonso, Callum Eilat, Carlos Sainz scoring some more points, finally getting some points for Alfa Romeo on the board once again, good season from him all things considered, then Nicholas Satifi with 6 points for Williams, Guan Yu Zhou, Christian Lungard, Nobuharu Matsushita, Mick Schumacher, Rubens Barrichello and Nikita Mazepin. In Season 8, Max Verstappen would take 6 wins, 10 podiums, Leclerc 3 wins, 7 podiums, Button 4 wins, 7 podiums, Norris 1 win, 8 podiums in the Alpha Tauri, Vettel 1 win, 6 podiums, Dan Tictum would pick up another 4 podiums, so it's decent enough from him I suppose, Sonoda with 1 win, 2 podiums, and Stroll with 4 podiums. The Season 8 Constructors' Championship would go to Red Bull, so it would be back-to-back -back wins for Red Bull once again here, with 6 wins, 14 points. Not too far behind, Ferrari in 2nd with 3 wins, 11 podiums. Alfa Tauri with 2 wins, 10 podiums. Mercedes once again in 4th place, 1 win, 6 podiums. Mainly Lewis Hamilton just not pulling his weight is the reason why they're that far down, but generally Mercedes doesn't seem as quick now in both of their drivers. Then you've got Braun GP, 4 wins, 7 podiums. Then McLaren, Alpine, Aston Martin, Alfa Romeo, Williams, and Haas. Going into Season 9, there would be a regulation change to the powertrain, but once again, no driver transfers. And in Season 9, Jensen Button would become a two-time Formula 1 World Championship, both times with Braun GP, but, what, 10 years between, 20 years, I think, between each other, because 2009 he won, and then this Season 9 is 2029, so um, 20 years later he wins once again, that's absolutely crazy to think about. Quite dominant, actually, over Max Verstappen in second place, Lando Norris in third, very good result from him. Then you've got Sebastian Vettel, Daniel Ricciardo, Yuki Tsunoda, Charles Leclerc, Dan Tictum, Jack Aiken, both on the same amount of points. Actually, Verstappen and Norris on the same amount of points as well. Then you've got Stroll, Alonso, Hamilton has dropped another place to P12 now. George Russell, Callum Eilat, Nobuharu Matsushita, and Guan Yu Zhou. Then you've got Carlos Sainz, Nicolas Latifi, Christian Lungard, Rubens Barrichello, Mick Schumacher, and Nikita Mazepin. 
Jensen Button would take 6 wins, 10 podiums, Verstappen 3 wins, 7 podiums, Norris 2 wins, 8 podiums, Vettel 2 wins, 7 podiums, Ricardo 1 win 4 podiums, Sonoda would take 4 podiums, Leclerc would take 2, Dan Ticton would take another 3 podiums, Lance Stroll would take a podium, and Fernando Alonso would get a shock win at the the very first race of the season, Alonso would win, um, which is just crazy, and then, yeah, kind of fell off from there but um it was looking promising at the start for him and also a bit of an interesting one which i think was the last race of the season george russell managed to pick up a podium in the aston martin and the constructors championship would look very interesting alpha tauri would win the constructors championship awesome to see another another team up there winning the constructors and alpha tauri of all teams as well very exciting two wins 12 podiums red bull in second with three wins 10 podiums braun gp third with six wins 10 podiums then mercedes two wins seven podiums mclaren one win four podiums ferrari with just three podiums dropping a fair way down the order to p6 here not a good one for ferrari Alpine with one win, one podium, then Aston Martin, Williams, Alfa Romeo, and Haas. And going into the final season, season number 10, there would be a regulation change to aerodynamics, chassis, and durability, but it didn't really mix up the grid that much because everybody was already maxed out at this point and pretty much had enough tokens to had enough R&D to, um, to keep their cars where they were. Charles Leclerc, though, would retire from Formula 1 after probably his weakest seen season at Ferrari so far. He would retire from Formula 1, opening a seat at Ferrari, in which George Russell would take. Very interesting there, because Russell went to Ferrari towards the end of my last 10 seasons video as well, so be interesting to see what he can do here. Robert Schwartzman would join Formula 1 going to Aston Martin. Jensen Button would be, go to becoming a free agent after winning that title. He was then done. He became a free agent. And Braun GP, my team, would sign Mick Schumacher from Haas because I wanted to see what Schumacher could do in a better car. And, you know, Haas had not been touched at all. They'd stuck with the same lineup the whole time. So I wanted to mix it up a little bit. And then Felipe Drogovic would enter F1 to replace Schumacher at Haas. And well, I'm sure Schumacher was happy with the move because he would go on to win the championship in season 10. Started out a little bit slow for him. There was a bit of a, a, a to and fro with Schumacher and Russell at the start of the season, but then Schumacher towards the end just absolutely took it away, winning the championship by almost 100 points to George Russell in second place, who still was fighting for the championship in the first half and had a great first season with Ferrari. Then you had Lando Norris in third, then Sebastian Vettel, Max Verstappen, Yuki Tsunoda, Lance Stroll, Daniel Ricciardo, Jack Aitken, Lewis Hamilton back up to 10th, but still not great. Then you've got Fernando Alonso, Dan Tictum, Guan Yu Zhou, Callum Eilat, Robert Schwartzman, Nicholas Latifi, Carlos Sainz, Nobuharu Matsushita being the last driver to score points. Lots of, I mean, that's 18 drivers scored points this season, so that's pretty awesome to see. Then the no point finishes Christian Lungard, Felipe Drogovic, Rubens Barrichello, and of course, Nikita Mazepin. Mick Schumacher would take 10 wins and 10 podiums this season, so. Every time he was on the podium, he won. He was never on the podium in second or third. He either won or he wasn't on the podium. George Russell would be with would be second with three wins, seven podiums. Lando Norris with only nine podiums. Well, I say only nine podiums. He didn't have a win, so only nine podiums. Vettel with three wins, six podiums. Verstappen with six podiums. Sonoda with four podiums. Stroll with two. Ricardo with three. And Lewis Hamilton would, in the final season, get on the podium one more time. And the constructors in season 10 would go to Ferrari, but it was actually a bang on exactly the same points for Ferrari and Alpha Tauri, both scoring 301 points, exactly the same amount, but because Ferrari had more wins than Alpha Tauri, or they had wins and Alpha Tauri didn't, Ferrari would take the title, and also because uh, Russell was ahead of um, Lando Norris, so that's why Ferrari would take the title. Three wins, nine podiums. Alpha Tauri, zero wins, 13 podiums. Braun GP, 10 wins, 10 podiums. Of course, they won the title pretty dominantly, but Barrichello didn't score any points because at this point, his experience was literally like zero, so he was just doing terrible in the best car on the grid. Mercedes then with three wins, seven podiums. They just seem to be stuck in fourth place then you've got red bull six podiums alpine no podiums but mclaren three podiums aston martin williams alfa romeo and haas enjoying their zero points at the back
So after 10 seasons this time around, this would be our top 10 drivers. Max Verstappen would once again, just like in the last 10 seasons video, he would be the most coveted um, driver in this career mode, but not quite as dominantly. I think he won four championships in the last video. He only won two world championships here, 38 wins and 76 podiums, puts him in first though. Sebastian Vettel in second with two championships, 26 wins and 57 podiums. Then you've got Valtteri Bottas also with two, two championships, but only 17 wins, 31 podiums because he retired early on. Then you've got Hamilton, one championship, 19 wins, 53 podiums. Jensen Button, one championship, 15 wins, 40 podiums. Charles Leclerc, one championship, 13 wins, 51 podiums. Mick Schumacher, one championship, 10 wins, 10 podiums. Lando Norris, no championships, but seven wins, 40 podiums. Pierre Gasly, four wins and 33 podiums. And then George Russell in P10 with three wins and eight podiums. So that is it for this second F1 2021, 10 seasons of My Team Career Mode Simulated. This time we've added Braun GP and it's been a lot of fun. Been very exciting to see. A little bit more of a shake up on the grid. More world championships for sure. Um, well, m world champions um, and, and more different drivers fighting for the top. And some of the driver moves were pretty crazy too. So really awesome fun. I really enjoyed this. I'll definitely do another one again soon. But these videos take such a long time to make that there are going to be quite big gaps between them, especially when I'm doing the My Team Career Mode series as well. Going to focus on that for a bit now. Keep those videos going. And we will come back, do another one of these soon. So please let me know in the comments below what team you would like me to um, make as my team next time. It can be another real life team, you know, like Braun GP, or it can be just another manufacturer like Lamborghini or Porsche or something. It could even be something completely random like Nike or adidas or i don't know kfc or something i don't know just whatever you can think of whatever you want to see let me know in the comments down below and i'll definitely give it a try but anyway that's gonna be it for this video guys thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed please go ahead like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video